everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Transformers Studio Series 86-19 Leader Class Snarl. And this figure is actually one of the best Sinobot figures I have purchased and I'm so glad I picked this guy up. I picked him up at Target as this figure as, along with his Optimus Primal and Bumblebee Movie Megatron are starting to reappear more in Targets. So check those stores out if you want to get these figures. So in this video, we're going to review this character and see why you should buy this figure and why it's one of the best figures ever. So without further ado, let's get started with the geeks. So this figure has a lot of details packed into it. For example, if we take a look at the chest region, we have some really nice sculpture over here. We have the Autobot insignia, some like sculpture over here around the chest region. We have like these little holes, lines, and all of these like screw holes and all that stuff that makes him look like a robot. Right here, if we take a look at the arms, we have some nice details right here as well. As well, just look at the, the, the forearms as well. They look really, really nice. Um, we can see that some Stegosaurus parts do pop out here and there, but I do like it. The hand sculpt looks really, really nice. Now, if we just take a look at the head sculpt, the head sculpt is very, very nice. We get a really nice silver, silver, and then we get some matte black, I believe. And we get some blue for the eyes. It looks really, really nice. If we turn our attention towards the torso region, it looks all right. Um, the sculpt work looks really nice. As far as the aesthetic, eh, it's all right. I do like the legs. They do look very bulky and very sturdy. I do like the Sigasaur spikes coming out. And right here, they just put in so much detail that I'm so glad that they did. Because if they didn't, it would have just looked so bland. And I really do like it when Transformers are detailed. If we do look inside that hole all the way over there, we can see some details over there. But they're not really that apparent. But I do like it. Even everything to the ends of the feet are very detailed. So we can see some really nice details around there as well. If we turn our attention toward the side... I do like that there is basically no back kibble whatsoever on this figure. If we just take a look at the details right here. Damn, they, they really put a lot of detail here, which is really nice. I do like it when Hasbro goes all out, puts a lot of detail. We can see some nice gold for the Stegosaurus tail and spikes. It looks really nice. Some red right here, and we get um, continuation of more details right here, which do look really nice. We have like this hydraulic areas, these like um, Cybertron, Cybertronian like stuff on it. It looks really, really cool. So I really do like it, and it does it does really scream G1. As far as articulation goes for this figure, it has a really nice articulation. He has a ball joint, the head can look up, down, tilt, side to side, do a full 360 if you wanted to. And he does have ratchet joints in the arms. I, re I really do like that because back in the day, old leader class figures used to have ratchet joints, and I do like them reissuing that into these figures. He does have a hinge joint right here at the arm, and a full 360 for the ratchets as well. He has 360 uh, bicep rotation, has elbow rotation, 90 degrees, and, and if you wanted to bend it even more, just put in that transformation detail in there, and then right here we could uh, bend it more than 90 degrees, which is really nice. This piece is mostly used for transformation, but could be used to articulate this figure into a more curled arm position. He does have 360 race rotation, which is really nice. He has 360 thigh rotation, he could do the splits, kick really back to that far also ratchet joint right there and up to this far which is really really impressive right here we have another ratchet joint at the knee so yeah i could personally see why it took them a long time to create this um mold and distribute them or they just had it in the bag and they just never wanted to bring it out but i do like this mold it's really nice and he does have foot rotation which oh i hate it when when there's no like little thing right here to stop it but it's all right i do really like this figure and he, for $50, I believe this figure is worth the price. So this figure is really, really well done. Now, as far as accessories goes, he does have one sword accessory. Although, albeit kind of small, I do like it. It is painted in silver, sculpted really, really well. And it does match with other Dinobots. And you could even incorporate it on figures like Grimlock and it will still look nice. And it has two ports right here. One for the side of the arm and one for the wrist to hold. So you can have it like this or you can have it like this. Whichever you prefer. But yeah, this is just the one accessory it did come with. So as far as the backdrop is concerned, the backdrop is the same one that we saw for many of the Autobots such as Perceptor, RC, Ultra Magnus, Springer, and finally Snarl. So we this background is used very, um, by various figures. It's the Autobot City background where Autobot City transforms and the Autobots retreat and the Decepticons like... They invade or something, or they retreat as well. Optimus Prime dies, yada, yada, yada. We all know, and I'm pretty sure the Commander class Optimus Prime that is coming pretty soon is going to have the same backdrop as well. So stay tuned for that. The box of the figure itself is very, very nice. We have a nice CG render of, or perhaps drawing of, 
So, I like to call it a drawing because it is animated after all. Um, Transformers the Movie, Studio Series 86-19, Dinobot Snarl, Hasbro, ages 8 and up. Obviously, I'm not 8, so uh, I, sh I think I shouldn't be collecting these, but they are so cool. Um, Transformers the Movie. On the side of the packaging, we get a nice CG render of Snarl in a happy mode, and it looks really nice. Right here, on the back side of the packaging, we get Snarl in his robot form and his Stegosaurus form. His iconic movie scene is the Battle, Bo Battle of Autobot City. And then right here we can see Snarl and the Autobots must find their way to destroy Unicron before Cybertron is devoured. So in the film, honestly this kind of doesn't really match the description or the iconic scene. So in the film, Snarl only showed up for the for the Battle of Autobot City and then after that he never showed up again. Here's the same, same image we saw here but mirrored. And the bottom of the box is just the words. And I just don't like the, the box being so flimsy. But I don't I don't I don't um, judge it that well because this year we're gonna get better boxes. For some size comparisons, here I bring in Optimus Prime, the Goat, Hot Rod, Ironhide, Jazz, C, Blur and Cup, Buck, and Grimlock here looks so well with this figure. Slug and Sludge. So yeah, here are all four Dinobots. Unfortunately, I don't have Swoop at the moment. A lot of people don't. Some people do. But once I get Spoop, we're going to have a complete cast of the Dinobots. And this collection is going to finally be complete. So yeah, we could see that the Dinobots are all around 9 to 10 inches tall. Or, I'm sorry, 8 to 10 inches tall. They all scale really well with each other. I do like Grimlock and Snarl the most because they have the paint, golden paint. Whereas these ones are more um, simple. And I do like that the that the sword compatibility with Grimlock does look really well. So you can equip these Dinobots with all the weapons and they still look really cool. So here I have most of my G1 collection, most of the G1 Autobots. And we can see how they all scale with Snarl and the other Dinobots. For Optimus Prime, however, and Hot Rod, they are inaccurate as I do have Hot Rod on a backdrop. And I do have Optimus Prime standing on the trailer. But here's an entire comparison of all the Autobots. So for transformation of Snarl, I'm going to make it very simple. I won't talk through it and I will just show you like a little b-roll of how to transform it and it's very very simple. So without further ado, let's get started.
now that we got through that gruesome transformation, it's all worth a while. I really do love this dinosaur mode. However, I just feel like it's a bit too fat at the end. I just don't really like how it's just clumped up. But I'm pretty sure this is all Hasbro could do at their moment. And it was it came out really good, nice. It's so good. I do like that we get some nice details over here, like this blue area. I'm not, I don't know what it is. We get some hydraulics right here, some nice details right here as well. We get some nice um, pinkish, reddish paint right here. So that is a really nice attention to detail. We have the, the head sculpt looks really, really nice. I do like the head sculpt. Unfortunately, this thing does not want to... Um, attached together it just wants to keep separating so yeah um i think this is a universal issue with most snarl figures as mine just does not want to tap in but uh this figure overall is pretty nice the end eh could be better but i do like how it looks like it did um they did their best and it looks pretty well he does have a millimeter a five millimeter port right here which attaches his blade so you could just attach it right there if you wanted to and it looks really really great i really do like how this figure looks now, uh, as far as this figure scale with the other Dinobots, here we have Grimlock, Sludge, and Slug. Unfortunately, no swoop as of yet because I haven't purchased him yet. And obviously, he's not really out yet, except some people do have him. But as, as we can see, here is a um, size comparison of all four Dinobots in their dinosaur mode. This one doesn't want to stick in. So as far as ranking goes between all the Dinobots, Personally, I think the worst one has to be Sludge, and the best one has to be Grimlock. Uh, and then after, and then after that comes this one, then this one. Who knows? With Swoop, that may change. But the the scale looks really nice. It it does feel like um how they how they appeared in the G one show and in real life. If dinosaurs were still alive, I'm pretty sure this is how they would scale. And it does look really nice. You could attach these um I mean combine these characters with other characters, and they, it'll still look really really cool. As far as um, articulation goes for this figure, he does have a swivel joint at the arm and a, the same ratchet joint at the arm, which is now his hind leg. So, yeah, not that not that very articulated, but I still believe that this is like probably one of the best Autobots we've ever seen in quite some time. So I really do like this figure. For one more comparison, I brought in the baby core class snarl and this snarl right here. So the baby core class snarl is in fact very small and it does co copy very um very similar um what's it called designs and mechanics that this one has as the head the sigasaurus head is hidden within the two legs on both figures the back is with the spines the the spikes cover the head region area and the the arms do become the hind legs so yeah overall the we can see a carryover between the two designs and i forgot which one came first but it still is very very good Unfortunately, like the other Dinobots, this Dinobot's head is not Blast Effect compatible, as there is no port inside the mouth. However, for characters such as Grimlock, Sludge, or Slag, those characters do have a Blast Effect port and um, could like breathe fire. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have one, but you could attach one if you wanted to on the 5mm port where the sword was. You could attach one right there, or you could even attach it in the screw areas, which could create some sort of dynamic area where... Um, Slag is probably injured, or you could probably attach one. I believe that's it. So yeah, this figure doesn't really have that much like like um, gimmicks, but it's still pretty cool. So some final thoughts for the Transformer Studio Series number eighty six dash nineteen Leader Class Snarl. I personally love this character and the figure. The figure is amazing. I do like it. The transformation could be finicky at times, and it's not the best. Um, there's some. Um, uh, critiques I do have about the figure's rear end area like I just don't like that it's too like flat and it just looks too chunky really wish it could have borrowed some mechanics from slug however I feel like they did a really awesome job at this hash roll you are doing so great at these figures cannot wait to collect your um studio series swoop but this figure is really great it scales well with the Dinobots. I can't wait to complete the collection and it looks great with G1 characters as well I got this figure at Target I got it at a discount it will um, it will spend seventy five dollars or more and get twenty percent off. And I got this figure around like forty dollars ish, like around that price, and it was pretty well. Uh, I you could also find this figure at Walmart as well. Amazon, you're gonna find it at a ridiculous, stupid price at seventy five dollars. Do not buy it from Amazon. Head to your Target for Snarl or head to Walmart for Snarl. I recommend Target because you can use gift cards, coupons, and deals, and so on and so forth. So this figure is actually. Um, I would rate this figure an 8 out of 10. It's really great. The details are great. The articulation in robot form is amazing. 
The paintwork is amazing. I really like it. And we just get so much packed into this one figure. I got this figure with Optimus Primal. Check that review out. You're going to like it. And until my next review, I'll see you all there. Thank you for watching.